We will now continue with our next speaker, which is Dr. Anna Pepler from the Royal Surrey County Hospital. Dr. Pepler is the Deputy Head of Audiology at the Royal Surrey and is a specialist in uh, complex hearing loss and balance disorders. She'll be speaking this evening on advances in hearing aids. So please welcome Dr. Anna Pepler. Good evening, and thank you for being here for my hearing aid talk. But many of you may be wondering why I'm here talking about hearing aids at a tinnitus event. But don't worry, the answer is simple. Hearing loss and tinnitus are strongly linked to together, with over 50% of people with tinnitus having hearing loss. And therefore, many of you with tinnitus will be wearing hearing aids. The aim of this talk is to apply to not only those of you that wear hearing aids, but maybe those of you that, that don't want hearing aids, or even those of you that don't need hearing aids. My main aim is for you to go away from this talk understanding how we can make the most of hearing aids for every single hearing aid user in this room. But first, let's consider what the advances of hearing aids have been. So if you see my slide up there that will show lots of different hearing aids, and the one thing that will come to mind is that we've moved a very long way from the stereotypical NHS beige hearing aid. Hearing aids have become smaller, you can get many different styles of hearing aids, and you can get them in virtually any colour you would like them. There's one drawback of this, hearing aids have become so small that often my patients will come to me and say, they're so fiddly, I don't know that I can change the volume control or the program button on this hearing aid. But don't worry, manufacturers have come up with a solution for this. Remote controls can be kept in your pocket and you can adjust the volume control or programs without having to worry about finding the buttons on your hearing aids. The other problem with small hearing aids is that the batteries are also very small, easy to get lost, hard to put in the hearing aid, and obviously, of course, if you're out and about, it's always the time when you need a battery that it isn't in your bag. So, the latest technology offers rechargeable batteries, and therefore you can just pop your hearing aids in these rechargeable batteries at night, and they will be fully charged in the morning. The other advantage of this is environmental, obviously not using batteries, which is obviously a really important thing that we're thinking about at the moment. Um, but also, in terms of batteries not being available around people that may be at risk of swallowing them. So that's the main change in what hearing aids have looked like. But there's been a massive change in technology over the years in what hearing aids can and can't do. Most hearing aids now offer you a volume control, and volume controls not only come in the version of going up and down, but they can adjust the frequency range so you can get a more bassy sound or more high frequency sound. Hearing aids also offer a huge range of program options, normally four or five program options on the hearing aid, and you can get programs from speech in quiet, speech in noise, music, the loop system, pretty much the situation you're in, there's a program for it. In the past, hearing aids were renowned for whistling, but with the latest technology, with feedback managers, very few hearing aids will whistle. And if you do hear a whistly hearing aid, the main cause will usually be, be wax in the ears, or the hearing aid not fitting properly. We naturally have two ears, and very often in the past, hearing aids just worked on their own. But nowadays, with wireless connectivity, hearing aids can talk to each other, which allows hearing aids to make the most of our two ears and talk to each other and compare the information coming in from each ear. As Mr. Valentine mentioned earlier in his talk, most people's hearing losses are in the high frequencies. And frequency compression is a fairly new technology which considers this. So in a lot of cases, 
when people have a very high frequency hearing loss, it's very difficult to give them a mu enough amplification from their hearing aid to give them any good quality of hearing. Therefore, frequency compression is designed to lower the frequencies of the sounds, so those people with poor high frequency hearing can still hear them. <laughs> then we've got noise management. So this is an area that manufacturers have been working on for many years and is still a developing area. And the problem with noise management is the hearing aid has to distinguish what is speech and what is noise. And the hearing aids are getting better at that. But the difficulty is, if you cut out too much noise, inevitably you are going to cut out some speech. So all this great technology, it's wonderful. We've really moved on with hearing aids in the last few years. However, many of my patients still come to my clinics and say three main aspects that they're not happy with their hearing aids for. One of them is, why is it when I'm watching television that it's so hard to hear the speech when the program has background noise or background music? Another one, is why, when I'm out with my family or friends at a restaurant, why is it so difficult to follow the conversation around the table? And then the other common one is why, if I'm in a noisy situation, a bit like we are, have been today out in the foyer, why is it so difficult to hear what somebody is saying to me, even one-to-one, -one, when there's so much noise? so often with these problems. It's because of the directional microphones. And I didn't mention the directional microphones on my previous slide. Directional microphones aim to focus on the person you're trying to speak to. In the past, hearing aids were designed to pick up everything around you, well, 360 degrees. But nowadays, hearing aids have been developed to focus on, say, if you want to hear that person over there, the hearing aids will zoom in on that person. And that will help you to hear when you're trying to speak one-to-one -one with somebody. But unfortunately, directional microphones only work over a two-metre distance. So if I was trying to talk to someone over there, the directional microphone will not focus on that person and will still pick up all of the sound around me. And therefore, it makes it really difficult, if there's even a little bit of noise, to hear with your hearing aids in that situation and focus on that person speaking. know this is the case. They are aware of this problem and they have developed assistive listening devices which basically allow you to be closer to the person you want to hear. So although you can't always be within two meters of the person you want to hear, you can place a device much closer to them and that device can link up with your hearing aids. And essentially the assistive listening device is designed to reduce the barrier of distance. And many of you today are using a very long established assisting device, listening device to hear me, the loop system. And essentially, my voice is going through this microphone to the electromagnetic loop around this room, and that sound is then being sent straight to your hearing aid, assuming, assuming that your hearing aid is on the loop program. So manufacturers have developed devices that are a bit like the loop system, but rely on Bluetooth signal instead. Because unfortunately, the loop system cannot go everywhere with you in a noisy situation. Imagine a restaurant situation. If you had a loop system in a restaurant, anyone that connected to the loop system would hear whoever was talking into the microphone. And then if you go to meetings or events, it's not always, always plausible for that situation to have a loop system. 
So instead, we've got these assistive listening devices that link up with Bluetooth. And the sound is sent from that Bluetooth device straight to your hearing aid. There's only one snag with this, is that you need a Bluetooth-enabled hearing aid. And unfortunately, on the NHS right now, we don't have Bluetooth-enabled hearing aids. But you can buy devices to make your hearing aid Bluetooth-enabled. To make a hearing aid Bluetooth-enabled, you have to put a shoe on the bottom of the hearing aid and then wear something around your neck to transfer the signal into Bluetooth. Fortunately, privately, there are now Bluetooth-enabled hearing aids on the market. And hopefully, in a few years' time, they will become available to the NHS market. And on the screen over there, I've just put an example of the devices you have to put around your neck if you do have an NHS hearing aid and want to link up with Bluetooth. At the very start, I said this talk applies to you whether you have a hearing aid, whether you don't want a hearing aid, or whether you don't need a hearing aid. And that is because to make assistive listening devices successful, we all have to play our part to make that happen. So I've got a few scenarios which I've come across in my clinics lots of times of where assistive listening devices can make a big difference to hearing aid users' lives. So the first scenario I have is Mrs Smith. She likes to go to yoga and art classes. She lives alone and this is her only way of socialising. Unfortunately, she has been wearing hearing aids for a long time and in recent times, she has started to struggle to follow the teacher in these classes. And it's got to the point where she thinks, well, I really can't go to this, these classes anymore. I can't follow what's going on. For her, an assistive listening device would help her. So she would need to give the teacher a microphone, like the microphones on the screen there, to wear. And that microphone could send the teacher's voice straight to her hearing aid, assuming it's Bluetooth enabled. And that would work brilliantly, but there are some barriers to this, and this happens regularly to people. The first is that Mrs. Smith needs to feel confident enough to go up to that teacher and say, would you mind wearing that microphone for me? The other is that Mrs. Smith's teacher needs to feel comfortable to wear that microphone. This may sound straightforward, but a lot of people have an anxiety about this, partly because they worry what the teacher will think when they have asked the teacher to wear a microphone. Also, what, do, what is that microphone? Is it a recording device? People don't, aren't familiar with them. But if that teacher wears that microphone, that will allow Mrs Smith to continue to go to her classes and not only enjoy her classes, but it's her social interaction during her week. Then we've got Mr. Jones. He is a committee member for, for his local village hall. He's been doing this for many years, but he's got a hearing loss, and he's just started wearing hearing aids. But whether he wears his hearing aids or not, he cannot follow what's going on in that meeting. And he doesn't really think he's a very good committee member if he can't follow the conversation. So again, for him, an assistive listening device is a great option. He can't hear the people over the other side of the room because they are more than two metres away. So why don't we place a microphone in the middle of the table? Maybe he needs two or three microphones. But they will basically pick up the voice of the people in the meeting room and send it to his hearing aid. Again, there's barriers to this and many people will say to me that they'd love to try this, but unfortunately they feel worried about asking the people in that meeting to have the device in the middle of the room. What if they think they're being recorded? It doesn't feel like an ordinary situation. Then we've got Mrs. White, who works as a secretary in a company, 
and she's really struggling to hear on the phone. And therefore, she feels she can't do her job properly. But she doesn't want to make a fuss, she just wants to get on with her job, and she, she doesn't want to make her employers think she's not doing a good job. So she's just carrying on, struggling with her phone calls. But again, she would really benefit from an assistive listening device. For her, she could have a telephone with a loudspeaker. That might make, help her hear better. But then everyone else is going to hear the conversation. She could have a telephone with the loop system in it, but she would still have to hold the phone to her ear. What she could have is a phone that's designed to work with Bluetooth, which sends the signal straight to her hearing aids. And a benefit of this is it sends the signals to both hearing aids, and therefore she can make the use of, as we said earlier, two ears is better than one. And also, she doesn't need to hold the hearing aid, the telephone to her ear. But as we said, she's not confident to ask her employers for help. She can't afford to buy this phone. So what does she do? Well, there's a government-funded scheme called Access to Work. And Access to Work provides grants for people in employment, whether self-employed, full-time, part-time, and essentially will provide equipment to help people stay at work. So in Mrs. White's situation, she could ask her employer to consider the Access to Work grant, and therefore get this phone, potentially the hearing aids be upgraded to become Bluetooth enabled, and therefore she continues to do her job well and not to struggle. I haven't time today to go through all of the assistive listening devices available, but there are a few more I just wanted to touch on. Firstly, you can get assistive listening devices that link the television to your hearing aids, so you essentially get direct audio input into your hearing aids. That's very similar to those of you that have a loop system at home, but it's an alternative option if you don't or cannot have the loop system in your room. And then you can also get apps that are Bluetooth linked to your hearing aids. And they can offer many options. You can have a volume control option on there, a bit like a remote control. The same with program options. It can offer a facility to find your hearing aid. There are even health and fitness apps that they can record how much you're wearing your hearing aid or how active you are or what situations you're in. And that's something that's being really developed at the moment. So that's really a whirlwind tour of assistive listening devices. And for those of you in this room that have hearing aids, I hope you go away today and think about why you may struggle in some of those noisy situations I was talking about, and maybe consider looking at some of these assistive listening devices or other options. For those of you who aren't hearing aid users, I really would like you to think how can you help in day-to-day -day life for hearing aid users to be able to use these assistive listening devices in meetings, in group situations, to help them get the most from their hearing aids? And if you want any more information about any of the devices or hearing aids I've talked about today, please speak to Hearware. They did have a stand here today, but they have their contact details on the slide here, and you can find them in our in the private hearing aid clinic at Royal Surrey County Hospital. Thank you very much for listening.